Hola guys and girls and welcome to week 7 of the PMC. We are up against Lux and his Pittsburgh Apollyons this is week 7 and this is a very important match for both of us actually. We do have the same current record of 5 and 1 and going into this week we can both get our <coughs> oh, sorry for that. We can both get our 6th win which is basically the threshold between making playoffs and not making playoffs since we have a 10 week total uh, season and half of the conference makes it into playoffs that means if you win more than half your games you're basically going into playoffs it's not a guarantee to be fair since you're not only facing people in your conference you're facing people outside as well and if you win more there and you lose your in-conference games there might be conference where with more wins than the other and that's when potentially six isn't enough but it's a it's a very likely chance getting that sixth win and yeah getting that this uh, like in the two in the last third of the season already could be very nice making you very more chill basically for the rest of the season knowing that you are very likely to make playoffs from this point so yeah that's why this game is important for both of us we of course want to keep our streak going currently we are on a four week winning streak uh, we won week three week four week five week six let's make that five let's make that ten let's make that all the way to the championship that's gonna be our plan but uh, yeah for that of course we have to defeat the Pittsburgh Empolians as well, which are not an opponent to underestimate. They have a very pretty threatening team and they have the same record as us, so they are doing pretty well in the season so far. So, now, before we go into the teams, of course, the usual shoutouts at the beginning goes to the trusty duo of Mastodon and Ereftos. Ereftos, once again, for recording this game for me, Mastodon for joining this team for me. Check them out, please. They're both coaches in this uh, in this season as well, so their links have been in the description for like all my PMC uploads. Just watch the map. Click on the video of them, watch the first two minutes, and then keep watching if you like it, and no, don't if you're not. That's basically all I'm asking. If you did not do that already, I implore you to do that. They are very nice guys. They help me out throughout the season, but probably help me out for future as well. And if you like my league content, from Wi-Fi leagues that is, then I'm dependent on those guys. And you are basically as well, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get the content out. So if you like my content, that's the least you can do. For them but uh, yeah that's enough of that now going into team preview of course I did upload the team builder yesterday link to that is in the description you can find all the nitty-gritty of the team why I brought that what his biggest threats are what my biggest threats are all this good stuff but a pretty short overview we got a salt asteroid heat we got a workup steel wing mega pidgeot we got a standard finny I want to say like max speed max HP a little bit defense then we got a uh, sugar berry special defense of needle queen groundium Z calm mind Mew and physically defensive Lorantis. Now, looking at the opponents team, he brought the Tornadus, the Mega Diancy, the Zygarde, the Basol, the Skuntank, and the Empoleon. Five out of six, which I predicted. Of course, I predicted the, the first three the Tornadus, the, the Mega Diancy, the Zygarde. That's his triple threat uh, core, his first three picks in the draft. They, he brought them close to every week, and they are what scares the shit out of me off, out of his team. That's a very scary offense. And then, defensive wise, Empoleon, Skuntank, I expected for sure as well. Empoleon is great for my uh, Finny. Especially, it's good for Mega Pidgeot as well. And then the Skuntank is good for the Mew and stuff like that. Buzzle, I was a bit on the fence about. Like, and my prep for Buzzle is not that intense. I actually don't have Overheat on the Rotom, and my whole Lorenzo set can't touch it. I don't have Psychic on my, uh, what you call it, my Mew as well. But Buzzle kind of struggles with my team. Like, Finny's a good check to that. Uh, Neo Queen's a good check to that. They both need different coverage to be dealt with, like Earthquake, Ice Punch for Neo Queen, and Thunder Punch slash Poison Jab for the uh, Finny. But yeah, both of these don't, they are not able to touch the other. And then I got the Mega Pidgeot, I got the Rotom Heat, I got the Mew, which all outspeed and kill, like Oko. So I was a bit offense on the bus roll, didn't expect that really to come. It did come, and now looking at his team, I think it's gonna be a Scarf variant most likely, since not not really all of his team is looking to be Scarfable as much. Today is naturally outspeed small team, don't really expect it to be Scarf, Mega Dance, always the Mega. Zygat is gonna be Bandit or Z setup. Skuntank is most likely going to be a Salt, as I want to say, and then uh, the or Black Sludge, and then the Apollyon, probably Leftovers or some kind of berry or something like that. And uh, yeah, that's why I think like Scarf Bustle could be some guaranteed to speed my Mew, barring I set up my, uh, I boost my speed and can just do a lot of damage with Leech Life and stuff like that. It outspeeds my uh, Pitcher as well, which could allow him to give Thunder Punch and Ice Punch, which like is good for my Finny slash Needle Queen. So yeah, Scarf Bustle I think very likely. But uh, yeah, that's his whole team now going into the match itself, looking at the leads and stuff like that. His two most likely leads are, in my opinion, the Tornadus for one, because it's the fastest thing in the match, essentially, since I didn't borrow the Scarfer. And my Pidgeot is not uh, spe uh, not speed tying with the Tornadus, actually made it slower. 
So it just could be to that, U-turn momentum, good damage versus something, blah blah. Or it needs to compose and just straight up get it with rocks. So both of, in both of these scenarios, I want to leave with my Roach and Heat because I can just do good damage with my electric attacks versus both of them basically. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave with my Roach and Heat and let's see what happens. Let me just check, check this real quick. Yes, the audio is recording. I check, well, just want to check that real quick because we had some troubles before that the match, so I don't want to record this multiple times. He does indeed lead with his Tornado's Legacy right here, so we do get the lead match up correctly. And I go through the calculator and Thunderbolts could KO if he's not a Salt Nest. If, he's, uh, if he is not, not a Salt Nest, not even Volt Switch would kill. So I actually decide to make a bit of an aggressive play, but still rather saves him at the max HP. And I go straight for the HP Ice because that would bring this in range of Thunderbolts slash Volt Switch. And if he decides to be fancy, goes into his Zyga, it's actually immunity. I can get a lot of damage from that. He does not say anything, he gets to go for U-turn from the damage. I can already tell that he is minus attack, so he a nature, so he's a fully uh, specially attacking variant. And Ishii doesn't go to Zygarde, sadly, he does decide to go to stay so Volt Switch was the play, definitely the play right there. Was feeling a bit uh, uh, aggressive there from the start, but uh, yeah, that always happens. If I know I play with someone, uh, a more, more uh, struggling opponent, I always try to play, uh, or uh, tend to play more aggressive. Right here, I do switch into my Nido Queen, of course, that is my switch into the Mega Diancy. Expecting a Diamond Stone coming out, I resist that, naturally it's pretty bulky. And Nido Queen is naturally pretty bulky, even though I'm split F on the physical side, I'm naturally bulky, and then on the special side, he does actually go for Power Gem, so that's gonna do even less since I'm split F. Still does a good amount right here, and right here I'm doing another aggressive play, I'm breaking the switch out, since I'm even with Ultra Shocker Barry, I'm out of range of Earth Power, so I'm actually going for the Ice Beam, trying to catch the something basically, and I do catch the Tornadoes, I was breaking either Tornadoes or the Basalt to come in, predicting the ground move, and those both Ice Beam does more, he actually does go into the Tornadoes, and that does a lot of damage, which is very nice, and right here I do just switch out right back, into my Rotom, which is my check to this. Don't want my Neo Queen taking too much damage since I still need it at around a, at a third health at least, so I can take out the Nerf Power with my Sugar Berry. That's the straight Hurricane, of course, that does nothing because I'm assault tested, but he does uh, confuse me sadly. And uh, yeah, right here, I actually decided to Volt Switch, not to go for HPIs again. He just saw me go for HPIs, so I'm not thinking he would go into Zygarde right here and probably go into. I don't know, probably is Diancy again, because even though it may evolve, it's still pretty bulky. But he actually does go to halfway where the Zygarde. So yeah, HP Ice was for sure the play right here. And uh, yeah, do we pull through? Do we look like a full go for a move? We actually don't. We get uh, 8 damage on ourselves with Confusion, but that didn't matter too much barring the damage. Since we did go for Bolt Switch right there. I do have switch, of course, into Randus right here. I'm predicting the Thousand Arrows to come in. This is my switch into that. He does go straight for the Thousand Arrows. And from the damage, we can actually tell that it does very little, and that means that he's not choice banded. So, like, it's mostly expected he's a setup variant, most likely with a Z crystal. We do go to our leftovers, and I can just go straight for the HP Ice, because that, of course, does the most to the Zygarde, and it does most to his most likely switching, which is the Bus Hole, because that resists the knockoff, that resists the Leaf Storm, and Synthesis. Uh, I'm still healthy enough to not go for Synthesis. So, we do go for HP, HP Ice right here on the incoming Bus Hole. Do it. Chuck a little damage and he actually is shown to be leftovers and that is very interesting so he's not scarfed that's very nice to know that means my Finny guarantee always outspeeds him that's why I actually got a hard switch out into my Finny right here he's not a salt death he's not Roselli Berry so Moonblast will be an Oko versus that thing as well which is great and uh, yeah leftovers makes me actually think as well that he might be substitute and that means he can't touch either Nidio Queen or Finny which is great as well he just goes straight for the Brain Punk right here Probably taking some kind of switch in because Leech Death, of course, would be the better play. Oh, he doesn't have Leech Death. That would give him coverage again for both Finny and the Neo Queen. But either way, I can't just fire. Off. I do take the Drain Punch like nothing uh, since I'm pretty bulky and resist that. I can't just fire off a Ninja's Madness right here, him, predicting him to switch out into his Empoleon, which is his only fairy that he has on the team. Uh, if Empoleon is gone, I can just spam Boom Blast all over his team. And what do you know, he does switch into Pittsburgh, his Empoleon. It was a rather safe play, since even if he stayed in, he wouldn't be able to KO with Poison Jab, and after that, can still go for Moonblast. But still, we do catch the Empoleon, do half to that, and he's shown to not have leftovers, so that makes me think that he's either Assault Nested or probably some kind of Berry variant. And we do a hard switch out right here into our Mew, because if Misty trains up, this Empoleon can't do nothing to us. We can't be burned, we can't be toxic, and we can't just set up Call Mines all over his face. He does go for Rock, so that means he's not Assault Nested, that means he's probably some kind of Berry. But we can still just go straight for a combine, and he of course is scared out. We brought him Mew in versus him, so he doesn't. He probably thinks this Mew can deal with Napoleon, and he does switch into Bronson with the Skuntech. Pretty uh, weird nickname. Uh, like at first I thought Bronze Song was coming in right here, but that's not a mod. Yeah, so he has Skuntech. So yeah, Bronson of course is another guy in the league. But yeah, we have this Mew extra prepared for this gun tank with the Z Crystal Groundium Z and our investment at plus one. We do Oko everything up to a max HP assault this is gun tank. If he's more less than that, he has a chance to live that. If he's less than that, he always guaranteed dies. Let's find out. We do go for Groundium Z, he does stay in. Let's see 
how bulky this gun tank is. We already know it's not Scarf because he did not split us. So yeah, Mew is angry, Mew is full of energy, Mew is at plus one, Mew doesn't like any stunk, skunks around, goes for a tectonic rage, cracks up the, the ground and smashes this poor skunk into the center of the earth. That's gonna hurt, let's see how much it hurts, it actually hurts all of it. This gun tank is going down, our investment is coming through. Don't actually know what settings are he was and don't know how much uh, I need to see crystal. Like if he was not the salt, that's not make the tree. If I would have done a lot already. But either way, he does go to the right here. And two sides just go straight for the ice beam. Don't want to play around if we go for U-turn, we go for soft foil. Just want to get damage on this tornadoes because that's going to be annoying to get damage on. So it's just, it's it's the fastest thing in the match and he has a generator obviously. And on the ice beam, or on the predicted ice beam or uh, something, he does actually go into his Apollyon, which just very little, takes very little from this ice beam right here. But since uh, I just actually just decided to go for the earth power right here, uh, because if he's not sugar berry, I can kill him, but he is of course sugar berry, so that's not gonna kill him. And we can actually see what this Apollyon actually has for me. Does he, does he roll me out? Does he toxic me? What does this Apollyon have for my Mew? And he has Scald. His best way to deal with my Mew is Scald, and that is great news. Because that means I can sell all over the thing. He does get the burn sadly, but that for the good way means that I synchronize the burn back, and that means that I never have to attack him. I can just go for softball call mine repeatedly. This opponent is slowly going down. I just get stronger and stronger and healthier and healthier. This is great news for my Jimmy Mutron right here. I just go straight for the roost, healing me up. Sadly, he does a lot of damage to me still since he is so low. He is in torrent range, and that's why this skull would actually do a butt ton of damage, even though I'm a bulky Mew at plus one spadef. Like you see right here, it doesn't do over half, but it's still a surprisingly good amount. I, I was a bit confused at first, but then the rabbit, okay, yeah, he's in torrent range. But it looks like he dies in two rounds of burn, so that means I can get another Call Mind up right here, then Soft Boil, and then I have a plus two, plus two healthy Mew versus the rest of his team. So, which is very nice. So, even with, with Torrent Boost and Scald, he's not doing a lot if I'm at plus two special defense. He just goes for another Scald. Uh, and uh, yeah, Mew is looking pretty. I decided to go for another Roost right here. I don't know if I said Softball sometimes because Softball is usually my primary move on Mew. This time it's Roost, doesn't really matter what I use. But uh, yeah, I just go for Roost, thinking the opponent will go down. But he actually does switch out into his Bustle, and that of course is smart he didn't, uh, since he now knows actually my full moveset. He knows I have Earth Power, Ice Beam, Call Mind, Roost. Don't have any flagging moves. So yeah, the Roost is gone. Uh, my Mew is uh, revealed to not be able to really touch the bustle. Plus, the Ice Beam will do a lot, but it won't oak him, and he will get a lot of recovery with Leech Life back. So actually, decided to switch out here back into my into my uh, what you call it, my Fiddy, since that takes take the Leech Life. I don't think he will go for prediction versus plus two plus two Mew because depending on his method, actually can actually two it KO him with the Ice Beam. And like you can see, he actually does not go for prediction. He just just goes straight for the Leech Life, which will do a little bit more than Drain Punch, but still basically nothing. And uh, yeah, we are free to fire off a Moonblast right here since his only fairy is Napoleon that goes down to everything. But since it does go to er down to everything, I predict actually to sack that right here and go for the Defog and get rid of the hazards he just sets up so we don't have to deal with that with our Mega Pidgeons and stuff like that. He does go into Empoleon, so that does all work out very nice. Once again, very safe predictions since even if he did go for Poison Jab, we could have lived that and that's still for Moonblast, you know the deal. But it still works out. Do get rid of the rocks and his rocker dies as well in one fell swoop. The Pittsburgh is down, the mascot is down, and uh, yeah, he does switch into the uh, Tornadoes right here. I still have my Rotom as a good switch into that, so I'm just gonna do r just that. Still can take anything, be it a Utah, be it a Knockoff, be it a Hurricane. I don't know what else other moves he has, he's just a free I predict. He does go straight for Hurricane, of course, that does very little because of our Assault test. And actually, we do get, don't get confused right here, so I can just go for Volt to predict him to switch out. But he actually does stay in, goes for Knockoff, so uh, Thunderbolt would have definitely been the better play. Sadly, after this Knockoff, and since I lose my Assault test, I am in range to die from everything from his Tornado. So this was the last time I can really switch my Rotom in versus it. And since I did go for Volt Switch, I have to go to something now which is which is able to take hit and KO back. And the only thing I really have for that is the Mew because everything else on my team either doesn't take the hit or I need a, at a good amount of HP. So I need to decide to just go to my Mew, which takes everything from the thing and can just go for Ice Cream to KO him. He does switch out, of course, he does go for U-turn and right here and does switch out once again back into his battle because now I'm not even boosted, so this Ice Beam will do very little versus this John Cena right here. That's around 20 to 25%, I want to say, but after leftovers, it's uh, it's basically already like only 20%, something like that, 20 50%. So I do get burned from me, but once again I can just hard switch out right here into my Finny, which doesn't have to worry about anything versus this Basil, because even if he goes to a move, he can't hit KO since I'm fast. It was so good to know that he's not Scarf, that he really left overs. 
because otherwise I would have been playing a bit, bit safe with my affinity because then if I hard switch it in I'd get to it go for poison jab and stuff like that. So yeah, that's problematic. He actually pulls the double right here, not going for prediction, going into a double into his tornadoes. And like I said, my Rotom is very low, so I don't really have a switch into this. My Finny though is still at a good amount of health. I can take a hurricane and just go straight for the move less. Kill this punish here, this thing, depending on his investment, or get some good amount of damage. He does go for hurricane, he sadly does hit, and I can see he does not get the confusion, so that is good as well. I do go for Moonblast and we do a good amount of damage, we do not kill but we get the special attack drop which is very nice, that means we can for sure take the next hurricane otherwise it would have been a roll and uh, yeah I actually decided to switch it up just go for Surf in case he wants to go into his, uh, what you call it, his um, Mega Diancy, it would of course still kill the uh, the Tornadus and the only thing it would do less to is the uh, Zygarde which he's not switching into a Finny or the uh, Bustle which has to have Moonstore and he actually does switch into Mega Diancy. I did definitely not expect that to happen so that is great we can just get rid of the uh, this Mega Diancy if he's minus the death nature that is a lot of damage and he lives on a sliver of health so I actually don't know if that was a roll or not depends on his investment and uh, yeah he lives on a sliver I do have to switch out my Finny I still need it for the bustle I don't really need it healthy for the bustle since even if it's um, if I'm in range I don't have to house switch it in I just need to revenge kill it safely and just to straight for the moon blast and this actually brings my Nidoqueen Queen now in range of Earth Power if I would not have the sugar berry so I just stay in right here go straight for Ice Cream he does go for Earth Power we of course eat our berry and that was very tasty just as this earth power we munch that up and go for an ice beam right here because obviously this dance would die to anything in case you want to switch out ice beam that's just more to all this team be it the bus or be it the zyga be it the trainers so he does get a special def defense drop with me as well which doesn't matter since i'm so low i basically die to everything he can't just go into anything to revenge kill me barring bustle because i think i'll speed that no i don't outspeed that but he just go to tonight Decided to go on tornadoes. I just click ice cream in case something weird happens. He does go for the knockoff, which of course will kill my Nido Queen, and we go from there. But it doesn't kill the Nido Queen. Nido Queen is the boss. We lost the sugar berry, we lost the item. He's minus attack. He's not killing us with knockoff. We go for ice cream, and we kill the goddamn tornadoes. Nips, you're a beast for taking this goddamn knockoff. I love you so much. Nips for, Nips for MVP for this game. He does bring in Zygarde right here. You just click once again Zygarde. If for some reason Nido Queen lives again, you can, you kill, you can kill Zygarde as well. But no, this time he does go for extreme speed. And at 3 HP, that's not that's definitely killing us from a Zygarde. And that means I can just go into Walnut right here. I don't want to go hard into my uh, into my Randus because he can go for Dragon Dance. And then kill me with the Outrage, so I need to get the Misty Terrain up. I could even stay and go for Moonless right here, but actually would die to Z thousand, uh, thousand arrows. So I decided to switch out into my Randus right here. And now we miss the terrain up. My Lorandus can wall this Zyga forever. He does decide to go for Dragon Dance versus my Finny because knowing Moon Dust wouldn't be an Oko. That was a good play. And plus 1000 arrows would kill me. That problem tells me already he doesn't have Drownium Z because otherwise he would have gone for that right there. And we can just fire off another HP Ice versus this thing. He does start switch out into his Bustle, of course. And this Bustle, that's actually the, third ice, uh, the second Ice move he's taken in this game. And uh, yeah, he's still not going down. He's still pretty healthy. And versus that thing, this time I decided to just sack my, what you call it, sack my um, um, uh, Rotom because I don't want to hard switch into my Finny because that would bring it actually in range of a standard thousand arrows, not Z Guardian Z thousand arrows. And having my Finny out of range of that is great because then I can go for the Moonless and get a good amount of damage and basically bring the Zygarde in range of anything. Uh, Rotom goes down right here and I decide to not go my Finny right here because there are already a few turns of Misty Terrain gone and I need Misty Terrain to not have this Zygarde sweep me. So I decide to play it more safe, not go into my Finny and decide to go into my Pigeon actually instead. Because then of course can Oko this John Cena right here. Actually the Hurricane it kills a dozen uh, uh, bus holes and it 2 it chaos the incoming Zygarde as well. So it does the job as well uh, even though it doesn't hit both of, the, uh, both of them super effective. So I do of course Maggie Wolf he decides to stay in and I go for the Hurricane and of course can't miss because of the great ability no guard and this John Cena is going down going down this uh yeah we, we can't see him but we definitely can't see him now since he's dead and of course there's only one left at this point is the zygarde i do just have to click the hurricane button bring in this thing in range of both moonblast from my finny and hidden power ice from my lorantis which in both scenarios is great i just go straight for a hurricane like you can see that does around 60 ish percent so that's definitely in range of both hp ice and the moonblast he doesn't go straight for dang dance and yeah, this is basically the last ditch effort of it is I just click Hurricane again because basically not allowing him to get a plus two because that would be scary. Misty Terrain is gone as well. So I have to go into Finny next. But he actually decides that he did not go for 1000 arrows. He goes straight for the Z Dragonium uh, Outrage. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he needed to do that and plus 1000 arrows would have killed me. But I don't know what his inve investment was in attack and he didn't know what my investment on Pidgeot was as well. 
so it probably was a roll or something, he didn't want to risk it. But since he wasted, or he didn't waste, he used the Z Outrage on my Pidgeot, which of course will die to that plus one as a Zyga, as a Z Outrage. Uh, that means I can go straight into my land, just don't have to get me that Misty Terrain first, because Outrage at plus one from an Adamant Zyga only kills me if he crits me, and if he crits me, he's locked into Outrage and I go to Fini and KO with move there. So I have him in dead lock, this is checkmate, he just goes for Outrage right here. Will he crit my Rant? Will Rant just pull through? It will, I can just go straight for the HPIs and get rid of this Zygarde, and this is the 3-0 win for the Borussia Dawn fan versus the Pittsburgh Empoleon coached by Lux. Very nice match right here, a uh, very good match, I want to say I like that match a lot, and I want to say I was in control for most of the time, the only real surprise which happened in the match was the one I, I, I was in my favor, was Nido Queen living, so <laughs> this match, even though it was quote unquote only a 3 I think went very well uh, with the offense of this, uh, you don't expect to go out with a high differential. But either way, that gives us, of course, the nice sixth win in the season. We are now on the five win winning streak, which is very nice. Roll to the cup in full throttle, and we are very likely, if not already guaranteed, into playoffs. We have to look at how the other matches go in this week. But this is, of course, great news. We keep our streak, even versus the toughest opponents in the league. And uh, yeah, now it's just all about keeping that up till we reach the championship match, and then do it once more, and then we are going out of this off this offseason league with another championship which is great news but uh, yeah MVP of course like I mentioned in the game it's goes to Nip so you can you cannot give it to Neo Queen for living that knocker from Tonates and killing it. That was a huge festival with my team. I was with everything but Rotom was too too low to deal with it. And yeah, Neo Queen for MVP. I I I am not allowing you to have a different opinion on this one. Sadly, like usually I'm pretty open mind but on that one no Nips for MVP. No other opinions allowed. <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, uh, enjoy this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit me on Twitter, Facebook, all the links in the description. Uh, check out all the other guys I mentioned in the beginning. Of course, check out my opponent for his side of the match. All the links are in the description. And uh, yeah, that's all from me. Roll to the cup, full throttle. I will see you another time. Ciao.